A year ago today, BP's Deepwater Horizon drilling rig exploded. That killed 11 men and caused the largest offshore oil spill in U.S. history. What has this incident meant for the deep water drilling industry? Well, let's find out. We're joined by Gaurav Sharma, Principal Analyst, um, Oil and Gas Infrastructure Journal. Also, Clem Chambers is with us, CEO of ADVFN, uh, both here in our London studio. Let's get into some of the, um, s some of the, the learnings from the... Um, uh, uh, f from what's happened really in the year since the BP oil spill. I mean, I guess what we had assumed was that, um, w that there would be a move against offshore, uh, o these offshore projects. What's, what's, what's been the reality over the past 12 months? You see, when we s initially started researching, we had the same sentiments, but three months into our research, and we just about completed it, we feel that it, that has not happened. In fact, if you look at project finance valuations that we have at Infrastructure Journal, it has actually increased year on year by 42.8%. I've put some figures for you before I came over. Now, in 2008, we had about $15 billion worth of project finance for offshore. In 2010, we have about $10 billion worth, but that's still an appreciation over 2009. The only thing which actually impacted offshore in the last five years was, was not the Macondo incident, it was actually the financial crisis mm -hmm. which made debt pricing all that much higher. And now we are seeing is that debt pricing is, is <coughs> back to pre-crisis levels. We are seeing loans of somewhere around 175 basis points uh, above LIBOR for some of these energy <laughs> projects. So if there was a move away from offshore, that's certainly not reflecting in the data. Has there been any change to the way the industry works as a result of what happened in the Gulf of Mexico? I would say somebody's loss is somebody's gain. Things are tough in the United States, purely from a legislative angle, but their loss is probably the Brazilians' gain. We have seen the Brazilian market pick up, uh, I mean, in, astonishingly in the last, uh, last sort of uh, three, three to four years, and Macondo has helped that. People, offshore drillers now think Brazil is the, is the go-to destination. The Brazilians ensure that they, they'll regulate their industry well. It's that, that's what they have told us. But in the U.S., the market is kind of constrained by how the permits are granted. The Brazilians have no such hang-ups. In fact, five of the projects that we have, five of the major projects that we have are Brazilian ones. Um, do, do these findings surprise you? I mean, I guess it's, it's tricky, isn't it? Because on the one hand, there was terrible publicity for BP, certainly, as a result of the Gulf of Mexico oil spill. And yet... That's not having no impact on demand for oil, is it? So we've yeah, got to get well, the oil out the ground somehow. The world needs energy, right? That's full stop, you know. Energy's life. You can't do without energy. So if they're not going to drill it in one place, they're going to start drilling it in another place. Now, there's plenty of energy out there. There's plenty of, of need for drilling. All the oil service companies are doing extremely well. So, you know, that's been a boom market for two years. Even people like GE are buying into that um, sector. So, you know, the world needs energy. It's, it's an absolute given, and, and people aren't going to go without it. Mm. chloe has got a question for you, too. Uh, hi, Clay, Clem. Hi. Good morning to you. You know, aside from energy, there seems to be, uh, you know, insatiable appetite for gold as well. And in your book, congratulations, 101 ways to, uh, what was it? 101 <laughs> ways to make money, was it? Was it? Was that, was that the pick name? Stock market uh, winners. Uh, yeah. pick, pick stock market pick winners. Oh, even in that. Oh, yeah, wonderful. exactly. Th yeah, there you go. You know, even in that, but you talk about how uh, some of the best strategies and, you know, last time we talked about how uh, we are now entering a new cyclical bull market. But is it possible that stocks move higher while gold also moves higher? Well, I think what we're seeing is, is, is a huge inflation worry. What you're seeing, even though that people are talking about, you know, balancing the budget, etc., in the States, there's still really a, a vast um, faucet of money pouring out into the world via America. And until um, the next election, that's not going to really be turned off in the States. And so, you know, we've got another 18 months of, of reflation coming down the pike. So, you know, people have to take their capital and put it somewhere. And there's very few places you can put it. You can put it in gold. Obviously, property is not exactly the great um, selection at the moment. So that's kind of shut out for people. So it's gold and equities. That's the place to, to, to be in. Bonds are clearly going to be in a bear market for years now. So with bonds in a bear market, all that money is going to be looking for another home too. So, you know, um, gold is, is a haven and from inflation. People desperately want that at the moment. If you look at collectibles, portable collectibles are absolutely exploding. You know, 40, 50 percent per annum in the last couple of years. Things like coins and art and wine have been going up because people just want to get their stash, their cash. And gold is the place to go. And equities, although it's not as exactly as, as good a hedge as, say, gold or land, it's nonetheless a very liquid um, way of, of, of putting your money out of cash and into something tangible. So, yes, you can, and I believe we will be getting uh, big rallies in, in, in equities over the next few years, and I think you'll easily see gold at $2,000, and you'll be hearing a lot of people predicting a lot higher numbers than that going forward, but I think you'll see $2,000 um, gold within the next uh, 12 months. 
Clem, if I want to play gold, but I don't actually want to buy the precious metal itself, how can I adjust my equity strategy to get some of those gains out of gold? What kind of stocks can I look at? Well, I mean, I, I personally um, think that if you want to put gold in an equity portfolio, you should look at an ETF. And I, I know that's sort of like one of those um, virtuous circle things where, where they buy gold and drive the price higher. But a lot of the miners are extremely highly valued um, and the gold price is built into them. So if you'd bought some of the gold miners, say, six months ago, you'd be looking at them going, why well, haven't these things gone up? Gold's gone through the roof, but my gold shares hasn't. That's because it's already in the price. And, you know, um, the best thing to do is to have good old physical gold in an ETF in your in your um, equity portfolio and just um, le leave it there as a diversification. That's the way that I look at it. Okay. That's the safest way anyway. Well, let's come back to you quickly before we uh, before we let you go. Since the, uh, the the Gulf of Mexico incident a year ago, we have obviously have a new uh, leadership team at BP with a different strategy. Do you believe that BP are moving increasingly away from the US when we see deals like the, what's been going on in Russia? Well, this, this thing that BP has somehow given up on the states is, is a myth. BP still maintains a heavy, heavy presence there. What they've done essentially is they've moved out of the refining and marketing end state side. But then that's part of an industry trend. Even if Macondo had not happened, BP would have still gone down that route, as has some of the other oil majors. Yes, they're signing deals in India. Yes, we, the whole Rosneft scenario is very well documented. But it, it, it's a nonsense that they're going to give up on the states. Okay, thanks very much for that. Um, thanks to Gaurav Sharma from Infrastructure Journal. Also, Clem Chambers, um, well done with the book as well. Good luck with Thank you. that. Uh, Clem Chambers, of course, from ADVFN. Well, that's it for this edition.